Good morning, good morning. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Letitia B. Russell, empowerment speaker, author, and I have the privilege of being your moderator today. So let's go ahead and, and get started. So named of and, and name in honor of Madam C.J. Walker, Walker's legacy was created with a mission to cultivate an ecosystem of access designed to inspire, equip, and engage global network of professionals and entrepreneurial women of color. You can learn more about legacy, uh, the legacy of Walker by joining us online at www.walkerslegacy.com. So when we think about this, this what I call our next norm, right? We think about how do we now work through what this next norm will look like as we finesse through the changes that's going on. Um, we thought through the co-work and connect, right? And so it's the virtual morning chat series aimed to learn about best practices, aimed to, to really talk through re remote working and what does that look like going forward? The importance of mentoring and staying sharp, what skills are needed for that? And then financial planning for small businesses and self-care. We're going to talk a little bit about the routine tips and then during this time of quarantine and social distancing, what are some things that you can pull away and then start to move and do for yourself during this new period of time. And so let's go ahead and get started with today's program. I have the honor of introducing our guest today. And so I'm going to say forgive me because I'm going to read his entire bio. See, when I was reading it to myself, <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I can't pull nothing out of this bio here. And so when I tell you it is a privilege to partner with Chris Cornell, it truly is. And so he has been wowing crowds for over 20 years. He is a poet. He's an educator. He's a renowned event host. Cornell delivers high energy performance that leave listeners on the edge of their seats. He is a graduate of Clark Atlanta University. Cornell got his start in promoting and hosting events during his college days as student government president. After college, he founded E Period LLC, which specializes in special events and marketing campaigns. Let me tell you, in today's really what we're everything that's going on, all things COVID today, marketing is essential. And so E Period provides top-notch entertainment to colleges universities, churches, community centers, festivals, conventions, and much more. In addition to planning events, Chris is a widely sought after host of local and international events in Atlanta, Las Vegas, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Bahamas, and many more areas. Chris Cornell has earned, his, has earned numerous accolades, including features in the LA Times, Atlanta Journal, Constitution, Rolling Out, as well as numerous radio and television interviews. Most recently, Cornell launched E-Period Speaks as a platform for public speaking and presentation coaching. Ever a community servant, he is also a former public speaker, um, speaking instructor, I'm sorry, at Spelman College and a professional skills facilitator at Europe at Workforce. Now y'all see why I had to read that entire bio, right? So please help me <laughs> in welcoming Chris Cornell as he teaches up to speak like a boss. Hey, Chris. Hey, hey good morning, good morning. How are you? Doing well, how about you? You know how to make a black man blush, don't you? <laughs> you know, I couldn't cut that bio short. I could not cut that bio short. I'm like, she's really gonna read the whole thing. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, I tried, I tried to see if I can actually trim it down. I couldn't, I had to get, I had to really give it to him like I, when I was reading the bio, so we're good. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. So thank you, Chris, for just joining us today. And so I know I just read your bio. I'm not even sure how you can follow that with much more, but let me just ask you by starting out, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So um, I tell everyone in a nutshell, I literally steal money for a living. That's what I do. <laughs> Okay. So my job is to empower people to find their authentic voice, um, to assist them in messaging their thoughts and advocating for themselves, and then being able to uh, tailor their message to specific audiences. So I've been doing this for about 20 years now. Uh, came to Atlanta from Houston, Texas, always representing Southside Mo City. Okay. <laughs> When I arrived on Clark Atlanta's campus, I major in communications and beyond just the hub of Clark Atlanta as a HBCU, 
Uh, Atlanta at that time was flourishing with just so many opportunities, whether it was the Olympics, uh, whether it was just black business, whether it was Freaknik, you know, there are just like so many things. Ooh, uh, yeah, renamed <laughs> so many different times, yes. Exactly, so you <laughs> did a lot at that time. And so it really started um, opening my eyes to just the various pockets of professionals that we have in Atlanta. Um, it's just a very niche community that we have when it comes to, when you think of black business, uh, we are just a beautiful diaspora. And so for me, I was able to kind of seamlessly move in between those worlds, uh, whether it was, you know, student life, whether it's community, whether it was, you know, church. And then as I matriculated through, I started an entertainment company because obviously I'm a social person. Right. And so through that social company, through, through my uh, entertainment company, I started as a producer. I always say, Jay-Z said, every deal I ever made said president. Uh, I came into it as an owner because I understood the power of controlling your narrative, of controlling your content, and who better else to tell the story than me? Yeah. So uh, when we started as a spoken word company, uh, I traveled as a poet. Uh, we were able to produce a lot of shows here in Atlanta that made a huge impact that garnered the attention of Russell Simmons' Deaf Poetry, TV One's uh, Verses and Flow, uh, BET Lyric Cafe. So we were able to source talent for those different uh, agencies. And then uh, when I branched out on my own, I really started curating more arts, culture, entertainment events and hybriding all of the worlds that I've been able to move through. So live music, comedy, spoken word, visual art, um, theater, yeah. being able to meld those worlds together and, you know, do these cross-functional events. We just found great success in it. So throughout my travels, I've been able to travel the world off of speaking well and interacting. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of that, um, again, empowering people just through the power of the word, because everything that we do, even though we might have bells and whistles around it, it is still highlighting people and providing a platform for them as vessels to pour out their soul and then make it make sense for the audience and monetize their um, personal um, ambitions as well. Yeah, oh, awesome stuff. And let me, you know, as I, as I hear you speak about all of the great things that you've done, I'm going to veer off and I'm going to ask you a question. People, um, we're home now, right? We're in this space of, for some, they were accustomed to going to the office. Others might just be at home and this is just what they've done. For that individual that's home, they're trying to start that business. I always say this is the time, right? This is the mm -hmm. time where you can really pour into it. Mm -hmm. What advice do you give that person who's still fearful, even though they're still working their normal nine to five and they're trying to figure out how do I dabble a little bit in this entrepreneurial world and make it, make it work? How do you, what's, what, what do you tell them? Well, I, I say now, the way that this world works, let me tell you how God works. And this is, I'm just letting you know, I, you know I'm, I'm spiritual and everything in God's time, right? Before we had this template, this schedule, where, you know, it was very regimented and we had time. You know, 6 a.m., I got to get up, got to get kids ready, got kids got to be at school. Uh, you know, I have to be at work at 8.30. And then from 8.30 to Five, I do this and then I come home and then I go Zumba then all this and so there were so many excuses and barriers in front of people of why they couldn't accomplish something yeah now guess what coronavirus what coronavirus? <laughs> I was sitting here and all the time is like colliding together yeah. and you yeah. don't know if it's day or night you look I'm like what is 2 p.m. I didn't even realize it so now what this has done it is actually taken the barriers and excuses away and has shown people you have a lot more time than you give yourself credit for. So just like you had that nine to five, now you need to figure out how to structure your five to nine. Because again, everyone has 24 hours in a day. And if you're going to give a company 40 hours of work, then you can give yourself 60 hours of work yeah. and still have time left over to do the things that you want to accomplish. It's yeah. really about just priority at this point. And if you truly want it, how are you prioritizing your time and then executing throughout the day? Absolutely. Good advice. You know, I always tell people my, my favorite phrase is do it afraid, right? Sometimes yeah. we are fearful. We allow that fear to stop us from, from all of the dreams and thoughts that, man, we can do X. 
-hmm. forgive me you all because I have yard people in my yard and so you can probably hear them so I apologize um, but you just I always say do it afraid because if you continue to allow fear to hold on you'll never get those things that you've been wanting to do so definitely thank you for that Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you. And, and they say fear is false evidence appearing real. Absolutely. It is. And a lot of times, you know, is we just get in front of ourselves. And so mm -hmm. one one thing I say and and I'm king of cliches, so just know you're gonna hear a lot of cliches. <laughs> um, and then also I'm just a king of quotes. I, lo I love quotes. And yeah. so, you know, Will Smith says, you know, fail early, fail often, fail forward. Mm -hmm. You're gonna fail. It's an inevitable fact that you're going mm -hmm. to fail. But yeah. the beautiful thing about failing is you are trying. Yeah, it is. And a lot of people don't make the attempt. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is to make the attempt, put yourself out there. And then once you fall, you be like, actually, that wasn't bad at all. I think I'll do it again. Yeah, you yeah. give yourself confidence. You give yourself confidence. And to yourself, what, fall seven, get up eight? There's so many things around, you know, facing our fear, conquering our fear. But the biggest thing behind fear is action. We don't take the action because fear freezes us. And then what happens is either we retreat or we stay still, we stay stagnant. Yep, you're right, you're right. So get back up and that's the biggest thing. You might fall, but it's important that you get back up. So, so what does it mean to speak like a boss? Tell us about that. Sure, so sure. speak so, like a boss like a is something I've been developing over the years. I've had the privilege to stand on many stages and again as an owner operator of a company but also as a educator as a trainer and I've been able to kind of utilize all of these experiences and then what I found is in different coaching sessions or in different uh, teaching sessions to your point the biggest thing with public speaking is that fear there's a there's an adage in our industry of, you know, the number one fear of, you know, everyone is public speaking, not death, public speaking. So that means if you're at a funeral, people would rather be in the casket than the one giving the eulogy, wow. right? Wow. And so what I have been able to do uh, specifically with business owners is find their authentic voice and build that confidence because again, ownership starts with you understanding your message you knowing your message, you being able to execute your message, and then people to buy into your message. So Speak Like a Boss is just really taking the elements of what we know to be true in the business field with the, the mission and vision statement, with uh, the elevator pitches, and our personal branding, and then combining those elements together. So when we show up, we show up as a total package hmm. versus piecemealing together, oh, uh, let me do this to check this box. Let me do this to check this box. You are who you are. And yeah. if you are who you say you are, it should show up holistically when you're speaking to people. And not only are you uh, able to command the CEO vibe of your company, but yeah. also as other CEOs engaging, interacting with you, you feel comfortable and confident in that engagement process. Awesome, awesome. You know, it's just something that's near and dear to, to me is when you talk about finding your authentic voice. You know, I think so many of us, especially for those that are in corporate, right, and they're, they're, they're really straddling the fence, one foot in, one foot out of doing things on their own. And it is, you're, you're not you and you're not being authentic when you feel that you have to be someone or something else in that nine to five role, right? And so you're trying to figure out, how do I find that authentic voice? Mm -hmm. And so let me pause and let me ask you, how does someone who, who's struggling in that arena, how do they find their authentic voice? So we're, we're going to go through an exercise a little bit later, but I'll definitely uh, give the first step of everything is self-reflection. Um, am I saying what I want or am I saying what I think people want me to say? Mm. Um, that is mm. the first step of anything. And that's kind of like just a life metaphor, right? Am I yeah. truly fulfilling my purpose in life? Or am, again, am I saying, okay, this is a blueprint that they told me I should follow. So I am just going to follow this blueprint. And now I find, you know, I'm a robot or 10 years uh, later, I'm so off course that I'm just so unhappy with myself. And so I tell mm. everyone to get still, get still and then say, 
what do I truly want? Like I'm a happy person and you know, uh, I, I thrive. Um, I seed myself in happiness. Like what yeah. makes me happy? I am selfish in the things that make me happy because if you take those things away, I'm no longer happy. If I'm yeah. no longer happy, I'm not a good person to be around. So what are those things that are true and authentic to you that drives you and makes you thrive? And so that's just internal, personal. But then you have to flip that to your business. Like, do you believe in what you're doing? Because your business should be something that you would do for free. It, before we had this call, I said, you know what? I would do this for free because I would. That's why I say I'm still in money. If right. you're telling me, so you're telling me that I just have to talk to people and tell them to figure out how to speak for themselves and you're going to pay me, I'll do it because it's my passion and it's my happy place. I love watching people win. So you, for you, you realize that you're going to get a flood of questions right after this yeah. because we're live. <laughs> yeah. And I love that because that's why we're here. We're, we're here because your authentic voice is you coming from a place of confidence and it is what it is. And in the black community, I say it what I say it. And you could be <laughs> cool in that because even professionally if you are skilled in that profession if you yeah. understand that industry and you also understand who you are and your role within that mm -hmm. industry yeah. then you can have no issue talking about it just like you would talk about how you love your kids if you could love your kids and talk about oh i love johnny and you could talk about johnny's fifth grade project seamlessly and not stutter and not even think about it yeah. you should be able to talk about your business in the same manner you know, your business and, and you as well, right? It's that having that confidence to to talk about you because I think with selling your business, it's also selling you in a sense, right? Folks yeah. have to believe in, you have to believe in you in order for you to believe in what, for others to believe in what you do and what you're trying to sell. And that's important as well. So, so. I tell everyone, um, people do business with people they like. Hmm. Not products, not that your product is better. Do I like you? Yeah. In this cancel culture that we have, we have a cancel culture. So-and-so said this, oh, cancel this person, cancel it. The reason they're doing that is because like, I no longer like you as a brand. Yeah. And so once that is done, then you are done. So if your brand or whatever your business was built on was, again, checking boxes off of what you deemed successful versus what was true to you, right. then you're always going to find yourself walking on eggshells, scared to make a mistake versus you making a mistake in public. And they'll say, well, you know what? We know Chris. We know that's his heart. We know um, how he normally does things and that's out of character. So we'll give you another chance. Yeah. So there, there are different ways to approach it, but it all starts with, again, you being your authentic yeah. self. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much for the great conversation. I'm excited to get into some work, right? I'm excited to to have everyone start to um, elaborate on this. So before we go to that, tell us where we can find you. Sure. So on uh, uh, Facebook, I'm E. Period Christopher Cornell. Um, and on Instagram, I'm E. Period Speaks, E P E R I O D Speaks. And so those are my two uh, main hubs. If you want to uh, reach out to me directly on LinkedIn, of course, I'm E. Christopher Cornell. Uh, I try to stay consistent with my brand because, again, I want to be very Googleable, if that's a word. <laughs> and easy to find. So E. Christopher Cornell on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn and then E. Period Speaks on Instagram. Awesome. You Thank you. Let me know how I can help. Awesome. Thank you so much. So we invite you to stay and hang out online with us at the virtual co-working session. Um, it's best when you're in gallery view on Zoom. And so no, it's really an opportunity for us to connect. I'm huge on networking. So it's really an opportunity for us to network and ask Chris questions of Chris. Wait, he is here. If you have any questions for us, we will be available for you. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. All right. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. All right. So um, what we can do now is kind of just go through the process. All right. Learning how to speak like a boss. How's that sound? Sounds good. Now, I think, are you going, and then any chat messages that come through? Mm -hmm. I'll see those and start to 
um, ask the questions and you know we can answer those as they come in. Okay, sounds good. Let's do it. All right, so um, if you are on Zoom, you should be on Zoom because you get the, the pleasure of doing this exercise with me. So to kind of get some context, uh, as a facilitator, as an instructor, there are just a lot of open source tools that we can use uh, to not only collaborate, but also for you to kind of get your thoughts and ideas out. And so um, one of those uh, techniques that I use is Google Jamboard. And Google Jamboard uh, allows you to really capture um, your thoughts, your ideas, but then kind of lay it out in a vision board style, in a, a vision board style. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share this screen and then let me know if you can see my screen and then uh, we can move forward. So um, I see people coming on in. Welcome, y'all. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Excited to see you all. All right. So all right. let me know if you can see it. Got it. I Good. can see it on my end. All right. Excellent. So um, what we're going to do is go through an exercise. So I tell all my students, you're going to need a pen and paper because we're actually going to do some work. Can you believe it? We're going to do some work today. Who's this guy to make us actually do work early? <laughs> get comfortable. Get at a place where you can write. Let's yep. have some fun with it. I am that guy. So in the chat window, I am going to send this link. And this is for my people on Zoom. I'm sending this link. And so uh, just give me a thumbs up um, if you're on video mm -hmm. or if you just want to use at the bottom, there's a reaction where you can do a thumbs up to let me know that you did receive the chat. And then we are going to work through our personal Speak Like a Boss vision together. All right. All right. So um, thumbs up. Everybody ready? All right. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Sabrina says thank you. All right. I see you, Sabrina. All right, so let's get this work in. All right, so first, every uh, company says that, you know, they um, have a mission and a vision statement, right? So we are going to work through that by creating our own messaging, not only for our company, but also for our personal interaction and networking with those different people. So if you have the Jamboard link, I'm going to show you how to make a copy. I'm going to show you how to make a copy. So um, the first thing is we are going to figure out who your business is, your brand and identity, uh, who are you, what makes you unique, how to upskill yourself, and then how to show and prove. So um, the first thing is we're going to create a mission and vision statement. So again, we're going to go through this quickly. So don't worry about if you don't have it all together. We just want to make sure that you have the founding things together to be able to talk from these specific points. Um, and again, I just want to remind you all, if you have questions, please don't be shy. You can place them in chat and we will try to get to all of the questions. And then even afterwards, if not, we'll make sure we go through them. Yep. yep. So uh, let's do one thing real quick. Uh, for my people that have the Jamboard, I'm going to show you how to copy it because this is a template. So uh, for my people that are on Zoom, I'm going to show you on a template, you are going to create your own template. So just like you're logged in here and you see my screen, you can go to the top where the three dots are, the top right, and there's a drop down. On that drop down, you can make a copy. You can make a copy of the board and you could create your own personal board. So even though we're going through this, you can actually make a copy of this, of your own personal board. So you would just go in and I see uh, Sonya. So it'd be like, Sonya, speak like a boss. And I'm not gonna hit okay, cause I don't wanna make your board Sonya. But again, you can make a copy of your board and they, that way you will have this for you to personally edit for yourself, all right? So I just want to kind of give you that so you can create your own board. But in the meantime, we are going to go through our mission and vision statement. So the first thing that we need to recognize is 
what is your daily mission? When you get up every day and you have your purpose, because we're talking about purpose, right? What is your end goal? At the end of the day, people will know what about my business. Mm -hmm. So just write some specific things. Again, not like they know that I do hair or they know that, you know, I, I sell houses. Like, no, specifically, authentically you, what is your mission when you trek out every day to drum up business for your, your goal? So you can either use the Jamboard or just write it out specifically about your industry. The second piece is, okay, what does that look like if I have discipline and consistency for three to five years? So for instance, Letitia, what do you do? Um, Full-time, I'm in HR uh -huh. and I do public speaking as well. Okay, so public speaking, what are your goals? Um, <laughs> Wow, Chris, you just put me on the spot. Hey, you know, we here. We here now. Let's go. <laughs> no, you know, my goal is that my goal is to continue to build my brand. And by building my brand, that is staying engaged with my audience, staying engaged on social media. And that is making sure that what is what does my true authentic voice sound like? And so I'm I'm sharing and telling my story in hopes that others will share their story. Excellent. So, what does that look like five years from now? That look like, if I'm being very honest and transparent with myself, that is me in a year walking away from corporate America, um, owning this business, being true to myself, being on someone's stage internationally. Okay. So, let's begin with the end in mind. So, five years from now, you will be working for yourself, Yep. with your public speaking business, with your authentic voice, using your story to empower and inspire. Absolutely. What does that look like every day for you? Um, it looks, it's grind every day. It's working. It's getting up early. It's writing down what does today look like? What things do I accomplish today? Who will I try and reach out to and connect with to set my brand? And who can I connect with in order to appear on either someone's show, or someone's podcast, someone's magazine? That's what it looks like day to day for me. Okay, excellent. So what I want you to do, and this is for everybody, take grind out because it's not grind. It is action, right? It is just repeated action. Grinding is going against something and wearing something down. What you are doing is you are seamlessly moving through the process, right? Yeah. So on a daily basis, you are putting your regiment together of what you um, are going to talk about, um, who you need to contact, who needs to hear it, right? Yeah. So you're teaching this class for me, Tish. Tish. Because uh, <laughs> I, I, I tell you, we, we went over to say, my home girl, Tish is going to care. But That's Tish, okay. you, you <laughs> I, I answered to both. I told you. All right. So. Have you done this? And this is for everybody. Self-reflection, right? And say, you said your authentic voice. The first part of our self-reflection is, what am I good at? Strength finders. Like, what am I truly comfortable with? What can I do already? To, you have to do what you can with what you have, right? And I think a lot of people, what they try to do is they go out and get these uh, degrees and they get these certifications and they go to these seminars because they're searching for something that they don't possess already. But what we want to do is we actually want to start and sit with what do we already have that we do well. A lot of times we operate out of lack versus operating out of strength, right? So the self-reflection part is how do we operate out of what we truly are strong at already and then once we operate out of our strength, then we can more readily identify what we need to grow in and what we need to develop. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Awesome. So that's what you want to do the first part. Self-reflection is what am I truly good at? And with your business specifically, when you say, okay, this is what I want to do for my business in that industry or in that business, what are you already good at? 
That way you can identify the areas that you need to grow and develop in. So that's the first part. The second part, what is your unicorn? Why you? What sets you apart from the competition? For instance, uh, Tisha and I are both speakers, but what's her niche? What's my niche? Tish, you're a survivor. I can't speak towards your, your personal truth, correct? Correct. For me, um, I am spoken word. I can speak towards my personal truth of how words have not only changed my life because I couldn't afford a therapist, but how my words are therapy and then they can provide things for other people. So what is going to set you apart and what is going to um, meet expectations not only for you, but then exceed expectations for someone else. Does that make sense? So what is your unicorn? What makes you unique? So first of all, again, operating from a position of strength, you understand what you do well, but have you asked your friends? Because your friends will tell you the truth that they're really your friends. Some of them, some <laughs> of them, if they're really your friends. <laughs> some of them, if they're really your friends, will tell you the truth. So ask your friends, hey, this is what I'm thinking about. Um, this is, you know, what I think really sets me apart from people. Um, this is, you know, what I'm really good at. Um, do you agree? Uh, do you have something to add? Uh, what else could I do? Uh, when you see me, what do you see? Right? So you have to, again, figure out what is going to set you apart from the pack, not only specifically with your business, but again, individually, what makes you just that unique person that people want to connect with? And once you get that edge down, again, it doesn't exist if you haven't written it down. You want to write it down, and then you want to incorporate it within your conversation as much as possible. So again, when we say speak like a boss, a lot of people are scared to talk about themselves. They're like, this feels weird. Oh, I'm humble, you know, so I don't want to, you know, shine like that. And there's like, God made us to shine. Why are you shrinking yourself, right? So again, operating from a position of strength, how are you able to identify what's unique to you and then articulate it to other people to advocate that you are the person that they should rock with versus anyone else. Because again, everybody else is doing this static thing, but you're over here in the same industry, but you're doing it in a unique manner. So again, you have the people that product and service wise, it's the same, but this right here has a little, mm, has a little shine to it because it feels different, it looks different, it walks different, it presents different versus a t-shirt. Now you have a bedazzled t-shirt with a black power fist in the middle. It's a difference. This ain't, this ain't a regular t-shirt. This is the black power bedazzled version because that's how I feel. I'm my authentic self. So that's what we wanna do for the second part. Hey Chris, can I, can I ask you a question? Sure. So I want to go back to something that you said, and it's very, very accurate, right? That difference between grind and that difference between action and taking grind and that. Let me think where sometimes many people don't go after what they want or see that they could have mm -hmm. out of fear, right? And that's a little bit what, what, what we talked about earlier. Sometimes it is not taking no for an answer. And sometimes it is wearing people down, right? Hey, I just want to follow up. Did you read my article? Hey, I just want to follow up. Did you read a little bit about me or what I, you know, so it's sometimes it is wearing individuals down. Mm -hmm. And many times people get mixed up. Well, is it bothering or pestering them or is it being persistent? It's being persistent. And so I think it's making sure that people understand the difference and not taking no or not right now for another, but it's still making sure that you're, you're consistent with following up the individual. So I just I wanted to kind of make, make that point as well because I was stuck in that place at some point. Excellent. And so actually that's a great point, Tish. And so let's, let's start here. I think a lot of people... And what, what I'm talking about, I want to be very clear. Everything that I'm talking about is prior preparation prevents poor performance, mm. right? And so with prior preparation, when it is time to have those conversations and when it is time to talk about those things, when the opportunity arises, when they, they say preparation um, plus um, 
but preparation plus opportunity equals luck. It's like you prepare for the moment, you have the opportunity. Oh, that person's lucky. He keeps giving all these things. No, he is prepared for the moment. So what I'm specifically speaking about is before we even have those conversations to reach out right. to the people or even to experience the fear to reach out to the people, yeah, let's yeah. prepare ourselves. Because again, that will actually settle you. That will calm you into feeling like, you know what? I got this because I've worked for it and I yeah. deserve it versus... Uh -huh waiting for someone to give you the opportunity and then they say okay kid let me hear what you got and you're like yeah. bleh, 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 I, I, I didn't know you're gonna actually say something i didn't know you're gonna respond so yeah. this is again about making sure that we're preparing um hala you said you said uh you can't see anything yes i am sharing my screen um i don't know why you can't see it can you see it uh tish i can i can okay excellent um, and I'll send you this holler, but all of those slides are on the Jamboard as well. If you um, go to the Jamboard, every slide that I'm showing is on the Jamboard. All right, so next step, Tish. You ready for it? Ready. Major key. Do you know what you're talking about? You have to know. I can't stand when people say fake it till you make it. <laughs> you actually know it and then make it. <laughs> you have to know it. What happens is we want to hustle. We want to know a little something about everything and then get mad when we don't get the opportunities that we think we deserve. So again, knowledge. Are you deeply immersed in your industry? Do you have the knowledge? Do you have the know-how to be an asset or of value to that person? Very important. So think about, again, now this is where the conferences, workshops, mentors, and all come in. It's one thing to ask questions. It's another thing to know the right questions to ask. And so those first two steps will kind of trim the fat away and whittle it down to, okay, now I know who I am. Now I know what I want to do. Now I know what sets me apart what other resources will assist me to continue to build my repertoire? So now I am not wasting time going to just a whole bunch of conferences and watching videos and buying all these books when I truly don't want to do that. So again, operating from a position of strength, there's that word again, we're stronger than we give ourselves credit for. It is way easier and way cheaper because instead of spending a lot of money, now you know specifically how to invest in yourself. Yeah. It is necessity that you invest in yourself, but now you know how to invest in yourself by understanding the different knowledge that we need to obtain to continue to upscale ourselves in the industry. Um, before I keep moving, any questions? Any questions from the panel? Um, I see a couple of people online. Um, what do we have? So, Hala, thank you. I will. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Hala. And I'm sorry, hopefully we're pronouncing your name right. I love Holla. That's, that's a dope <laughs> name. Holla. I'm sorry, Holla. I'm not making You know what? I, 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 we will not with you, Chris. No. <laughs> I, I try, I try please, to be so professional, please, but, you know, sometimes my Houston goes out. Holla. So, right. All right. But no, knowing right. that, you know, I always say know that elevator speech, that elevator spiel. What is it? Tell me about yourself. Woo. Are you teaching this class? I'm sorry. You know what, Chris? No, I'm telling you. Oh, I, Bam! Look at that! It, Ooh. Ah, ah. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> and we walking and talking together. Perfect <laughs> your pitch. And so, so this is how you put it together, right? Who are you? Tell me about yourself. Operating from a position of strength, we understand what we're good at. We understand the areas that we need to grow. Then we figured out what sets us apart, not only individually, that's who we are and how we show up, but also within our industry, we're the unicorn. Now, as unicorns, we have obtained more knowledge because we truly are passionate about what we do, what we believe, and how to get it. And then we create our pitch. A lot of people, again, write all of these fluffy words that feel good and sound educated, but they don't mean it. And, and people don't honestly feel it when they say it to them. But if you have gone through the process of speaking like a boss, any boss that stands in front of his company, you should say, you know what? I believe that person. 
I believe we're going to be all right. I believe that, you know, the work that I'm doing matters. I believe in what this person is selling. Why? Because it's his company. And who knows your company better than you? So when you are perfecting your pitch and you're organizing your thoughts, it is you. And who can take you off of your square to make you feel comfortable and confident about what you know to be true within your authentic self because you have done your due diligence to create it, right? Yes. So that's where our pitch comes in. And then guess what? Practice? We're talking about practice? <laughs> practice. practice. <laughs> in the mirror. Yeah. Record it. Now, now you have your phone, so you don't have any excuse. Take your cell phone out. Record your pitch. Leave yourself a, a voice note. Um, call a friend. FaceTime somebody. Zoom somebody. Hey, can I bounce my pitch off of you? How's this sound? Because again, we aren't memorizing the pitch. What we're doing is we have all of these different amazing things to say about ourselves in our toolkit. Yeah. And so now it's in our toolkit. If we're in a networking session and Tish, we're talking about uh, events, now I can pull out my hammer, which is, well, it's interesting you say that. Do you know that I run one of the largest clean comedy shows in the Southeastern region? Uh, we feature national artists such as HBO Deaf Poets, BT Comedians, blah, blah, blah. That's my hammer. I'm at church and they're like, oh, we need somebody to talk to this youth. Oh, where's my Phillips head? But it's interesting you say that because I do a series called Speak Like a Boss that advocates for young men where they can find their voice, learn how to speak for themselves because when they don't, emotions take over. When emotions take over, that gives the police the opportunity to incarcerate them or kill them. So we want to make sure that our young men are empowered and they yes. can speak and articulate their thoughts and feelings. Yes, yes, so yes. there are just different things in my toolkit that are now part of my elevator pitch versus my name is Chris Cornell and I am a public speaker for 20 years. I have, boo, yep. get this dude out of here, boo. That's what will happen. <laughs> it's, it's unauthentic, right? So again, now we have these different things that have made our pitches more powerful, poignant, and again, true to who you are so you can be confident and comfortable. Questions before the two, coup de gras. Questions before the coup de grace. We're making some good time. I like this. We are. Good awesome. Work. I'm glad you can see the screen now, Hala. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Hala. All right. Uh, any other? I see the chat window is going off here. Let's see. Do we have? <laughs> okay. Excellent. All right. So last thing, and this is, you know, courtesy of Toastmasters, because <laughs> again, <laughs> I research like why would I create all these things when Google is my friend? Google is my friend. So everything I that I talk about that I want to reinforce, Toastmasters has figured out in a very great format. So this is taken from Toastmasters International, but it is actually the blueprint that you should follow when it comes to speaking like a boss. Mm -hmm. So it is, again, the speaking like a boss ideology is not the physical manifestation of you actually oratorically speaking to someone. It is actually the internal manifestation of, am I the boss? Am I the CEO? Do I understand my message? Am I unique? And what does that look like now as I am speaking to different people? So am I prepared? Do I come out, do I start strong? Am I speaking with passion? Am I speaking in a conversational tone? Um, and of course, patience. So this is where your point comes in because it is repetition and repetition is mother of all learning. So as I'm making these calls to clients, as I'm reaching out, you know, via Facebook or email or, or whatever, and I am going through the process and checking off, you know, different people that I want to get in front of and speak with, am I patient? Because eventually somebody's going to answer back. And when someone answers back, yeah. have I prepared for this moment? Absolutely. So that's pretty much what Speak Like a Boss is. Again, if you have the jam board, um, you can use each board and kind of write your thoughts out and kind of write, okay, this is how I want to kind of organize my thoughts. Here's what I'm thinking. And then the beautiful thing about Jamboard and what I shared for you is a shareable link. So now you can send your shareable link to friends or colleagues and they can kind of vet your thoughts and give you some great feedback about that as well. So 
any questions or comments about anything that we've talked about and this is all of my information if you want to follow up and speak to me more and learn about the different webinars and the different series that we have coming up for the summer this summer we are going to um prepare for the fall because if you think well i'm not going to get political but i think that kids aren't going back to school and so <laughs> did you say are or not are not okay and so they are going to need extracurricular activity so virtual communication is something that we're working on especially with my young entrepreneurs that want to understand how to speak like a boss and being able to advocate for themselves in the business so we'll be doing different webinars like this for uh, students and entrepreneurs uh, launching in the fall. And then just specifically, if you want me to come and, and talk to your group, or if you want me to present or moderate or whatever, uh, please have me. I, I would love to be there. So um, we have a few more minutes. So if people want to continue working or have any questions, you know, please let me know uh, how we can assist right now. We're in a groove. We're vibing. Absolutely. What did y'all think about this? It was awesome, right? Give us your thoughts. We'd love to hear your thoughts while we have a few more moments. Yep. And if you want to come off mute, um, you can come off mute if you want to uh, awesome. raise your hand. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Hala. Thank you, Sabrina. If you want to come off mute and share or have any questions, you know, we definitely can feel questions. If you want to keep it in the chat, that's cool. We can keep it in the chat as well. You absolutely lived up to that bio. See, this is why I keep saying I had to read the entire bio. <laughs> uh, you're, you're too kind. Again, I, and, and just kind of, you know, tie all of this up in a bow. When people see me, um, and I tell the story the, all the time. Like, of course, I look like I'm 6'3 on this Zoom because obviously I am. But. <laughs> Um, I'm only five foot five and my voice has always been the great equalizer and the reason you see this energy the reason you see this confidence is because I was the same five-year-old boy that got up to do his Easter speech and everybody was like oh look at this little boy he's so cute and they laughed and I thought that they were laughing at me versus they're just laughing they're like oh that's nice look at him about to do Easter speech and I ran off stage and so I was thinking like they're, they're looking at me, they're judging me, um, I'm uncomfortable, uh, I don't know, you know, is my message valuable, am I valuable? And so my, my mom, God bless my mom, made me get up, because she a black mama, like, you gonna do your speech. <laughs> and so yeah. I got back up there, and when I said the speech, I was like, oh my God, everybody can hear me, and all eyes are on me. This feels great. I love, I love this. And I've been on stage ever since. And yeah. so I tell everybody, you're not going to be Barack Obama overnight, but you have to continue to put the effort forward, continue to get in front of people, continue to fail forward, continue to con um, figure out, okay, this works for me. This doesn't work for me. Because again, you can take tips and tricks. You can take all these tips, techniques, and tricks, but until you truly feel comfortable with who you are and the message that you're delivering is not going to matter so yeah. get comfortable and rooted in the word and then get rooted in your word absolutely absolutely you all can join us um every wednesday the month of july for co-working connect at 10 30. Uh, please if you have an opportunity log on you'll see posts on registrations really enjoy you all today um great energy and thank you chris again for just uh, you know great session with everyone thank you Leticia. Thank you. thank you for the opportunity uh, mia and walker's legacy and Absolutely. you know definitely we're gonna we're gonna connect after this because i'm just very excited about what you're doing as well and and godspeed and uh, much success for me as well thank you thank I you I, I have a question yes, yes. i am sabrina sabrina, Hi, sabrina. I want to learn how I can pitch two different parts of my business that may be may appear to be unrela unrelated. I am a family caregiver, so I help other family caregivers to not to forget about their own self-care 
as they take care of their loved ones. I'm also a business anthropologist and I help my clients to learn more about their customers so that they can market to them effectively. So when I'm in a chamber meeting or a networking event, I don't necessarily know the types of individuals that I'm talking to. So how can I incorporate like the B2B side of my business and the B2C side of my business? Because I mean, if they go on my website, they would see it, but I, I'm still struggling with that in terms of how to, um, to show the common thread. So I'm going to ask you very directly, what is the common thread? The common thread is that I'm helping both types of clients um, communicate better with others. Because family caregivers have to effectively communicate or self-advocate for themselves, whether they're speaking to the medical um, uh, professionals or other family members, given family dynamics, they have to be effective communicators in order to, to create their own space for self-care or self-advocacy. At the same time, marketing managers, they're often under extreme um, time deadlines. They have to learn how to um, market to their target customers. Um, but in order for them to do that, they need to have research in a timely manner so that they can advocate within the organization for, um, for whatever marketing campaign that they're trying to advocate for. Awesome, Sabrina. Thank you for the question. And I'm going to give you a very clear response, okay? Okay, all right. Thank you. You're making up the thread. It doesn't exist. So going back to what we said about being able to clearly speak like a boss, mm -hmm. get rooted in what you do for each business. And then once you get rooted for what you do in each business, then you can identify the types of events that you're going to attend per business. So less is more. What you're trying to do is do two things at once versus one thing at a time. So okay. you are creating multitasking for yourself unnecessarily. So you want to be very clear in what you do on one side and then find the niche for that and then service those clients. Then be very clear what you do on the other side, find the niche for that and service the two clients. Because you're trying to make those worlds interact when they don't and they don't have to. And then you'll still be getting the same amount of revenue on both sides of the house versus splitting the revenue, trying to do two sides versus just I get revenue stream from here. I get a revenue stream from here. Because guess what? You are the lake. Okay. All right. So what you're saying is, is that if I'm at a chamber event in New York City or I'm at a chamber event in Florida somewhere, that I need to decide up front, like, which pitch I'm going to, to um, push at that particular point in time as opposed to trying to um, pitch both at the same time. Correct, but take it one step further. Do your research to find out who is going to be in a room that will most benefit from the business that day. So don't try to read the room, try to get an understanding of who's gonna be there and what their mm -hmm. interests are, and then it'll give you um, better leverage of how to position yourself with the business that you wanna present. And, and if I can chime in and say, it kind of goes back to, and forgive me because I don't, I don't um, remember verbatim what you said, Chris, but it goes back to kind of that hammer and Phillips head that you mentioned, right? It goes back to when you hear that ask from whomever's in the room, that's when you stand up and say, ah, let me tell you a little bit about what I do. And so I think it, it, it very much to Chris's point, you, you've got to hone in on, you don't have to combine the two. You can absolutely be successful with having both brands separate from one another and combine as you see fit based on what the ask is. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you so much, Leticia. Absolutely. I'm yeah, sorry, Chris. I just had to chime in. No, that was perfect. Again, that's, that's the reason we're here. So again, the student has become the teacher. <laughs> <laughs>
Any other questions? I think we have time for like one more question before um, we have to log off. Any other questions? That was great. No? All hearts and minds clear? <laughs> 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 All right, Tisha, I'll let you, I'll let you do the closing and uh, All right. you have a great hump day. Absolutely. Well, thank you all again so very much for joining us today. I'm glad you were able to take some, carve out some time um, today to hear this very important topic as we go into our next normal. Um, and again, we'll look for you if you are able to attend any session in July. As a reminder, it's every Wednesday, the month of July at 1030. And we'll see you here if you're able to join. Have a great hum day and have a great holiday and be safe, everyone. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. Bye, y'all.